We do know that one man was taken into custody. The FBI just made the announcement a few moments ago. 32-year-old Paul Miller, he's alleged... I'm not doing it anymore. My girlfriend left me. My family is harassed every day. Paul Miller's gone silent on the internet since his arrest a week ago. People think I like this? Do you think I like it? I wish we didn't have to do this. 32-year-old Paul Miller spent the night in the Broward County Jail this morning. He was brought here to the federal courthouse in Fort Lauderdale. My life was destroyed from, from just trying to be a normal journalist. Paul, thank you so much for joining One American News. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. It's scary, dude. I have to go. I'm, they're going to send me to prison. You know, there's nothing I could do about it. Oh, you must get an ego boost when you see a meme of yourself. I don't. I don't get an ego boost. I don't even really like it. It's weird. There's two potential reasons for why an individual might wake up one day with the overwhelming desire to publicly display themselves as the Joker on the internet. They could either be a lighthearted prankster looking to give someone a laugh in exchange for a video reaction, or alternatively, they could be a deeply tormented individual looking for an outlet to spread a message of misery. You might have seen his painted face pop up in your recommended before. After subsequently thinking, who the hell is this dude? You searched his name but found nothing more than a few low quality videos recorded from an unknown period in the past. There's a reason for this. On the 2nd of March 2021, former YouTuber Gypsy Crusader was arrested at his Fort Lauderdale home and is now facing over 30 years in prison. The reason we say former YouTuber was because leading up to his arrest, he had been banned from almost every social media platform you can imagine. Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, DLive, none of them wanted Paul Miller on their platform, and it's certainly for an understandable reason. Gypsy Crusader used social media to spread a message of hatred towards those who shared differing opinions to him. However, the most interesting part is that Gypsy Crusader wasn't always like this. Initially, he was a fairly moderate political commentator, but if you follow his life over a period of approximately three years, you can remarkably observe his life steadily descending into madness one step at a time. What was it that drove Gypsy Crusader to become the person he eventually ended up becoming? I was a journalist, and I used to go to, I used to, go to all kinds of rallies and protests and things like that, and I would cover it. I was independent. I was trying to make my way as a journalist. That's what I wanted to do. Before he would come to be known as Gypsy Crusader, people simply knew him as Paul Miller, an unassuming individual from the state of New York. Between 2008 and 2018, he had been a professional Muay Thai fighter, trainer, and coach. Before all this, before journalism, I was just a martial artist. That's it. I was just a regular little martial artist. I wanted to fight. I wanted to train people. Paul had been extremely successful in this domain, peaking at the US National Kickboxing Champion in 2013 and 2014. However, beginning in around 2018 at the age of 30, Paul Miller decided he wanted to venture into the world of politics and journalism. Initially, Paul's approach to politics was conservative, but fairly moderate and nothing even remotely close to extreme. In old clips, Paul is seen walking into the offices of Instagram, demanding to know why certain Republican politicians had been unfair fairly banned from the platform. Do you guys want to talk about the, the what's it called, the banning of Republicans across the internet? You guys don't want to talk about any of that? Nothing out of the ordinary for any conservative journalist. Other clips display Paul walking into the offices of CNN, calling them out for posting fake news stories. CNN is fake news. They engage in Certainly provocative, but not exactly dangerous or extreme. But as time progressed and the social media sphere became more and more polarized, the issues that Paul reported on steadily became more and more extreme, which would lead up to one pivotal night in late 2018, from which Gypsy Crusader would eventually be born. You have a very unique story about what happened that night. Tell us about when you first went down to the club that night, what you saw. On the 12th of October, 2018, a far right group known as the Proud Boys were hosting a political speech at the Republican Club in New New York City. Paul Miller, the independent journalist, was hoping to attend so he could write a story on the event, however was denied entry as he didn't have tickets. However, it wasn't only Paul Miller who had attended the event without tickets. Antifa, a group at the opposite end of the political spectrum who considered themselves to be the arch nemesis of the Proud Boys, had also attended the event with the goal of protesting their actions. After Paul, the at this point independent journalist, had been denied entry, Antifa spotted him walking out of the event assuming he was a member of the Proud Boys and subsequently attacked him under the assumption that he he was aligned with the group. As they were coming towards us, I knew they were gonna, that they were after us. If Paul Miller had escaped the fight that night without the help of anyone else, it's likely that he would have returned home as nothing more than a bruised and battered independent journalist, but the fight played out in a slightly different way. When other people would have walked away in the streets of New York, 
These two men sat there and, and, and helped me fight these guys. Two members of the Proud Boys came to Miller's rescue while he was being attacked. So naturally and understandably, he had gained a level of respect for them that he didn't possess when the night began. So not only did this fight cause Paul Miller to magnify his existing hatred for the political opinion held by the individuals who attacked him, but it also aligned him further with the group who ultimately came to his rescue. However, after the events had concluded, Paul Miller stated that he still didn't align himself with either of the groups involved in the incident. And you're not a member of the Proud Boys or a member of the Republican Club. You just went as a spectator no. to see it. No, I'm not a member of the Proud Boys. The members of Antifa who attacked Paul that night were arrested. However, the case was thrown out, but this wasn't the end of it. The members of the group still blamed Miller for what had happened that night and subsequently made it their job to ruin his life by any means necessary. They then doxed me, they got me fired. They harassed me, uh, they harassed me more, I had the FBI sent to my house. Amplifying his hatred for their movement even more. In a revenge attempt to discredit the political opinion held by those who were trying to ruin his life, Paul Miller would then register a YouTube channel by the name of Gypsy Crusader, uploading first-hand accounts of the mid-2020 New York riots, attempting to display the violent nature of the protesters. Those who aligned themselves with such a movement were unsurprisingly not happy with Gypsy Crusader's attempt to discredit them, and would once again snap back at him, this time going even further by harassing harassing Gypsy Crusader's family. So they found my mother's business. They harassed my mother for weeks and weeks and weeks. They they called her for weeks on end. Then they finally came to my mother's house looking for me, not knowing that I don't live there. Also putting him in a position where he was completely unemployable. They proceeded to dox me again and then get me fired from my personal training job. And then I was not able to make money anymore. Understandably, once again, Paul wasn't too happy with this. However, rather than fighting back with violence, Paul began to upload videos to his Gypsy Crusader YouTube channel stating that it was the only way he could fight back legally. I just did this because it was the only thing that we were, it was, it was the only thing legal that we could do to fight back at the moment. But while Paul worded it in this way, there wasn't much genuine political discussion being had, and his YouTube channel more or less became an outlet for Paul to voice his hatred towards those who shared differing opinions. Gypsy Crusader began to dress up like the Joker as a representation for the individuals who felt as though they had been wronged by the system. He then began to go on the video chatting website Omegle, looking for minorities to which he could spread his hatred towards. Initially, many thought that these videos were intended to be comedy underpinned by shock value. Is it like a, it's like a joke, right? However, the reality was quite the opposite. Viewers who held similar views as Gypsy Crusader and felt as though they had been wronged by the system resonated with his message. And as a result, Gypsy Crusader began to build up an audience around his unique videos. He's the Joker in real life, and I kind of like it. Many who didn't even agree with his message also developed a liking for Gypsy Crusader as they respected his ability to stand up for what he believed in, or they simply liked the fact that he put in the effort to fully dress up as the Joker while on Omegle, regardless of whatever he was talking about, an ultimate negative as it unfortunately added credit ability to his, by this point, extreme views. However, while Gypsy Crusader did find a small audience who resonated with his message, unsurprisingly, the platforms on which Gypsy Crusader was spreading his message of hatred were not fond of the content, and Paul Miller was slowly banned on every social media platform one by one. YouTube, then Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, pushing him further and further to less well-known streaming sites, ultimately shrinking his audience. By the end of the bannings in succession, only a few small websites such as Bitwave.tv and Telegram would continue to let him spread his message. However, the viewership on these websites was so small that he was unable to grow. His live streams were garnering a viewership of around a thousand people per stream, and it seemed as though Paul Miller's extremely short time in the sun was already coming to an end. However, Gypsy Crusader didn't only capture the attention of the social media platforms from which he was being banned, he also began to grab the attention of an external entity with far more power than any social media website, the US government and the FBI. The Anti-Defamation League said they approached the feds when Miller became more radical last year. The question regarding Gypsy Crusader's actions was no longer, is this appropriate for social media, but rather become, is this appropriate for society? Gypsy Crusader had already been on the US government's radar after prior charges in 2006, 2007, and 2018, which were going to come in handy if the FBI wanted to put Paul Miller behind bars. The charges from 2006 and 2007 meant Gypsy Crusader was unable to legally carry a firearm. However, in January 2018, Paul was found to be carrying one regardless. He was charged for the offense, but hadn't been indicted for it until until over three years later, when everything done in Gypsy Crusader's past would come back to haunt him. At around 5 a.m. on Tuesday, the 2nd of March, 2021, Paul Miller's Fort Lauderdale rental property would be raided by the FBI after he'd been living there for only a month. Flashbangs going off about 6 a.m. We ran, I went outside to look, and there was about 
30 cars, people everywhere. The arrest was for the 2018 illegal firearm charge. However, it's hard to believe that this was the only reason when the arrest seemed to coincide with the simultaneous increase in online notoriety. The Anti-Defamation League's Center for Extremism stated that, The concerning thing about him is that he seems to feel it's necessary to become more and more extreme to keep his followers, you know, interested. Also stating that there were numerous elements making him a danger to society, such as, He has a criminal past. There's a red flag that he has weapons. He, you know, he posted images of himself with weapons. A day after being arrested, Gypsy Crusader went to trial, which went down as follows. During his federal court hearing, his lawyer said Paul Miller was ready to stay off the internet and wear a tracking device, but the judge determined he was a threat to the community and should not be released awaiting trial. Articles written by websites such as the Washington Post stated that Miller was facing up to 30 years in prison. Prison. However, on the 27th of June 2021, Gypsy Crusader was interviewed over the phone by an individual who was seemingly trying to get an update on the situation, where Paul gave a rough outline of the amount of time he was actually facing. Tell him that I'm looking at from a year to two years, something in that range. Okay. It's not 10 years, it's not 50 years, it's not 30 years. It's not anything like that. Following this, Paul Miller had another hearing over Zoom, which is bombed, interrupted, and recorded by those who consider themselves enemies of Gypsy Crusader. Yeah, there's um, there's a person that I know who's uh, who's online. His name is Jay Danks, and I just seen him twice pop up on the screen, sir. And he's a streamer. So uh, I assume that people are trying to make a spectacle of me. Yeah, the um, there's an FBI person on the on the screen right now. Um, FBI has dialed into this call, so we're aware of what's going on. I, I do see what's going on here. The most interesting part of this hearing is undoubtedly the genuine display of Gypsy Crusader's completely defeated morale. I just don't want to be made into a spectacle, sir, any more than I already have. And my family has suffered enough, everyone. I just, I don't want to make anyone suffer anymore. Paul Miller, aka Gypsy Crusader, is due to be sentenced on the 30th of August, 2021.